Ya, Assalamualaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh. Good afternoon, dear guests, speakers, and participants of the international webinar with the theme COVID-19 has made HR the most important job in sustainability. My name is Hogelin Devi, and I will be the host for this international webinar. How are you? I hope you are all doing great today. It is such a pleasure and a great time for us all together and join this webinar. Although we may not be able to see one another face to face regarding the pandemic, but we can still have this chance to get a new insight and new knowledge about the role of HR itself during this pandemic era. Before we start our webinar today, I'd like to have uh, Dr. Windiarto SA MBA as the head of Master of Human Resource Development Program of Postgraduate School Erlangga University Surabaya and the PIC of HR 24/7. Saya persilakan Pak Win sebagai Ketua Prodi Program Studi uh, S2 Magister Pengembangan Sumber Daya Manusia dan juga penanggung jawab dari HR 24/7 untuk memberikan sepatah dua patah kata sebelum kita memulai webinar ini. Silakan Pak, time is yours. Thank you very much, Miss Debbie. Hello everybody, good evening. Welcome to the webinar for today. It is my pride. Uh, I am here to be a PIC of this program. This forum will be held monthly, according to Master Ski, will be uh, held monthly. And we will uh, share experience around the world about everything that related to the human resources and for today program we invite the speaker from Ailanga first Mr. James he is a uh, my one of my best student in my class hello Mr. James and then uh, we also welcome Mr. Mrs. Uh, Uligan from Bhutan. Hello, Mr. Uligan from Bhutan. Welcome to this webinar. And Ms. Ureuna, Ureuna, eh? Ms. Ureuna from Mongolia. And James from Tanzania. And also everybody here that joined with this webinar welcome and i'm so happy that today we can join with this webinar forum and i hope that we can share our experience yeah, about COVID <laughs> that happened in your country also and very bad in indonesia because uh, but i think today is uh, a little bit better because uh, the number is also uh, already decreasing. And you know that Indonesia have a very big day, eh? Hari Raya Idul Fitri. Maybe it will be held uh, next two weeks. Eh? And it's very, very important event, important time for us in Indonesia, Hari Raya Idul Fitri. So, uh, because of this COVID, and then you know uh, we cannot meet with uh, our family. Cannot I cannot go to my mother, and I will also using the Zoom meeting with my mother. <laughs> also uh, conducting a webinar like this one <laughs> for the idol fitri. So. Maybe this kind of uh, COVID can give us a new experience, you know, innovation or idea, conducting, uh, conducting people for the future. Maybe there is a difference, different environment that we have to think about, and we uh, formula. I mean, create the idea about how to develop uh, human resources or maybe 
the changing of environment of working environment maybe because of uh, this pandemic everybody now can work from home and we realize that working from from home is um, maybe more efficient you know we can spend more time focusing on our work and then maybe in the future this kind of uh, environment is will be you know as a, a new culture a yeah? new culture of 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 human resources yeah the way of working in the way of, of people work around the world so with with this webinar i hope you can share an experience you know uh, have an idea about uh, new development of human resources and as a representative of ira university i say thank you for all of you joining with this forum and hopefully this forum will useful for you all thank you very much assalamualaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh thank you very much Bro. thank, thank you, you pak win thank Bro. you mr win uh, it is such a pleasure to have you here, here with us all thank you for a nice welcoming speech uh, we are so glad to hear that okay as mr win has mentioned before that we have three great speakers joining this webinar and will be the speakers for this webinar also let me introduce you our three great speakers starting we have Ms. Ariuna Ganbatar, PA in English Education, PGD HRP. Hello, Ms. Ariuna. Are you there? Hello. Hello. Yes, okay. Here. Yeah. I'm How are you today? Here. I'm doing okay. well. Okay. Great. She is an HRO at Environmental Research Information and Study Center in Mongolia, and also uh, an English teacher in Korea. Well, thank you for participating in this webinar, Ms. Ariuna. Mm -hmm, okay. Thank you. And then, yeah. Next, we have Mr. James Kalimanzila, BA in Political Science and Public Administration. Hello, Mr. James. How are you? Hello, everyone. I'm fine. Okay. Great. He is a senior HRO at the Ministry of Water and Irrigation in Tanzania, and also an HRM, HRD, and HRIS expert. Thank you, Mr. James, for participating in this webinar. Yeah, I'm very happy. And then, that to meet. Hmm. Yeah. Thank you. And then for the third speaker, we have Ms. Ulkian Lamu become in accounting. Where is Ms. Ulkian? Are you there, Miss? Okay. So she is an she is an HR lecturer in Gedu College of Business Studies and HR accountant in Drug Yango PPT LTD. Okay, so we have these three speakers, and let's start the first session presented by Ms. Ariuna Ganbatar, PA in English Education, PGD HRP, with the topic cold and hot of COVID-19. Uh, before that, all participants can drop the questions uh, during the seminar by writing the questions via Zoom chat. Untuk peserta bisa meninggalkan mengutik bisa menuliskan pertanyaan yang akan ditanyakan kepada speaker di kolom chat Zoom and then the committee will pick the best three questions to be answered by the speakers. Uh, the, the speakers will answer the questions at the end of uh, at the end of the session on during the Q&A session. And then uh, jadi nanti setelah Selama berjalannya presentasi seminar dari ketiga speaker kita, peserta boleh menuliskan pertanyaan di kolom Zoom chat, kemudian panitia akan memilih tiga pertanyaan terbaik untuk masing-masing speaker. Kemudian speaker atau presenter akan memberikan jawaban selama sesi tanya-jawab setelah ketiga, ketiga speaker melakukan, saya melakukan presentasi. Begitu. Okay, uh, Miss Ariuna, time yeah. is yours. Yes, time is mine. Hello, everybody. Uh, I'm really appreciated for the team, which is giving me the chance to participate in this event. And let me introduce myself. And my name is Ariuna, and I'm from Mongolia. And um, I did my bachelor in English education in 2012. 
And after that, I changed my major to HR planning and development, and I did my postgraduate diploma in India uh, two years ago. And currently, I'm staying in my hometown, which is Mongolia. Uh, we are still locked down here for three weeks. And uh, also, uh, I live in uh, Korea. I'm working as a teacher there. And when I came back to Mongolia on February, because the situation was getting worse in Korea. And that's why I came back to my home country. And currently, I'm just staying at home with my kids. Because uh, I always travel here and there. So there was not enough time to stay with my kids. So the COVID-19 is giving me a chance to stay with my kids. I'm appreciated with it. OK, today, the, my topic is the hot and the cold of, of COVID-19. OK, the next page, please. OK, here is the introduction part. And I will start with this pandemic, what is COVID-19? And I will continue with hot and cold of COVID-19. And the conclusion part will be there. OK, next page. OK, here are the definition of key terms. And uh, as all of you know that what is COVID-19, also let me uh, define it here. And COVID-19 is a respiratory illness that can spread from person to person, just like a flu or cold. And through the air by coughing or sneezing, close personal contact, like touching or shaking hands, and touching an object or surface with the viruses on it, and occasionally through um, facial contamination, and the, vir the virus that caused COVID-19 is a novel coronavirus that was first identified in Wuhan, in China. And here are the definition of what is cold and what is hot of COVID-19, uh, it's referred as a challenge and opportunities that resulting from COVID-19. OK, the next page, please. Mm. OK, I'm from Mongolia, so let me introduce what uh, to you guys what's happening in Mongolia. And Mongolian government is doing very well since January. But in March 10th, we in here the first case confirmed from French. And until now, here the 98 cases confirmed. And the 55 Mongolian military students who arrived from Russia on 13th of May tested positive. Then the cases are increasing day by day. But the, all the cases are imported. And luckily, we are not in community cases. So, But still, the government of Mongolia um, advising us to stay at home and not to go out, not to go to the public place. So. Also, it's compulsory use of face masks in public and stopping the inflow and the outflow of people. And here are the advisory. All land borders with the China, Russia will remain closed. Passenger traffic both by road and by train until 31st of May. And also all in and out international flights from Mongolia remain suspended until 31st of May. And limited access for Mongolian nationals and members of diplomatic corps 
only through Mongolian Russian, Istanbul Act, and border with the specific prior approval from the Mongolian State Emergency Commission before entering the country. And wearing face mask while mm -hmm. outside and home is mandatory until end of May. Luckily, we, uh, there are 15 cases which are recovered and no deaths now. Okay, here are the things uh, which COVID-19 pandemic has thrown. And it's not only in Mongolia, it's for the globally. And the job you were told couldn't be done remotely, but can be done remotely. Also, many disabled workers could have been working from home, but corporations never wanted them to. But still here, uh, especially the male worker, female workers are working from their home while they are taking care of the kids. And also it has proven that the internet, internet is a utility, not a luxury. And universal healthcare is necessary it's because it's a global pandemic. So on, not only your healthcare is not important, we must take care for the global day. Okay, next page, please. Okay, hot. Hot of COVID-19 is referred as a challenge that are resulting from COVID-19. And COVID-19 has created many challenges in the world, for example, decline, economic, business, social challenges, education challenges, and political challenges. In the other hand, there is a cold of COVID-19. Okay, next page, please. Uh, also, cold of 19 is referred as opportunities that are resulting from COVID-19. Here, I want to show you the, some opportunities of COVID-19. It's uh, firstly, it's developing of e-business and online business and market and e-learning. Also in here in Mongolia, we closed all the schools and kindergartens and universities until 1st of September. So the kids, mostly the students, they are learning from their home through online classes. And also the kindergarten kids are attending the online classes by television. And e-learning e utilizing electronic technologies to assess educational curriculum outside of a traditional classroom. In most cases, it refers, uh, it refers to a course, program, or degree delivered completely online. And also uh, one of the issues uh, today's case, which is development of webinar. And this is a uh, chance for us. It's a great chance to learn from each other and uh, to identify the other countries' cases. Uh, the webinar is a presentation, lecture, workshop, or seminar that is transmitted over the web using video, like what we are doing now. And the technology, the application of scientific knowledge for practice purposes, especially in industries. Okay, for the innovation, innovation in its modern, modern meaning is a new idea and creative thoughts or new imagination in form of device or method. Okay, next page, please. Okay, here are the case study.
I already mentioned about the, how the Mongolian government is working. And here is the key actions from the government of Mongolia to prevent from the coronavirus, like transportations. In, in transportation sector, suspensions of all the international flights and passenger trains has been extended until the end of May. And closure of air and overland border crossing between China and Mongolia since, uh, since January. And for the quarantine, it's working like three weeks quarantine of all travelers, travels who coming from the other countries. They must stay in a quarantine places. And cancellation of all public events and conferences, sports, festivals, and tourism activities are all closed. Now, go okay, to the next page, please. Uh, if and a few weeks, a uh, few days ago, also when the, the students from, right, when they come back to Mongolia, uh, in Mongolia, we closed all the local roads, train and domestic flights. And temporary closure of all kindergartens, schools, universities, it's staying until 1st of September. In Mongolia, the school year, starts on 1st of September. So the students will not join the, in classes until September. Mm -hmm. Next page, please. Mm -hmm. Here in a worldwide, the COVID-19 has uh, influenced lots of sectors, most of the sectors especially in human life, relation, education sector, economy and business and social. It's uh, influencing a lot. Mm -hmm. Okay, next page, please. Uh, here is the one, I want to share with you one interesting, um, case study, which is like Mongolian has been active in supporting other countries in combating COVID-19. And Mongolian president, Bat Talak Hatmas, visit to, he visited to China on February 27th, was viewed as an example of the most genuine support to China, and which at the time was in the most difficult part of its struggle to contain COVID-19, and he was the first president who visited in China after uh, when the COVID appeared, and uh, it was very great event. And in support of China's uh, fight against the virus, Mongolia donated 30,000 ship as a strategic partner and a neighbor. We are neighbors, so we must to help each other in this difficult time. And this was a um, very great moment of Mongolian president. And he was the first president who visited in India, or the first foreigner who visited in China. I'm not in India, sorry. Okay, next page, please. Uh, Mongolian has adopted the following present, uh, preventive measures against COVID-19. And uh, this slide shows that uh, the closure of city adm administration culture offices, like libraries, museums, and community and culture centers closed. And um, also, these include the vocational trainings, lang language centers, and driving schools. School age children are pro prohibited from appearing in public places until the end of May. And I'm also a mom of uh, two kids. I have a 
song and I have a daughter and also they are now not they are prohibited uh, from appearing in public places even in the malls even in the uh, restaurants they are not allowed okay next page please Also, prohibition of public gatherings until first of uh, end of May, and visitors to public offices are subject to temperature rate screenings and required to wear a face mask. And we are now we are not shaking hands with each other like this. And in other words, as Mongolia is too reliant on import and export. Um, the aforementioned statistics show that budget revenue has a direct dependence on export of mining. We are, in Mongolia, the most popular, uh, the most advantageous sector is the mining sector. And to put in the numbers, mining products make 87% of the local export revenue. Okay, next page, please. Mm. Here, there are three measures which are taken by Mongol government of Mongolia. During the coronavirus pandemic, the Mongolia is taking three main measures for the economy. And COVID-19 pandemic was putting up to million jobs in the global at risk. And the first measure is to increase the financing and the investment is the health sector. And the secondly, to support entities with the tax policy. And thirdly, to support business owners with the monetary policy. And Mongolian, uh, we are enjoyed a solid economic recovery in the past three years, but the COVID-19 outbreak presents a significant challenge to the impact on globally and regional economic conditions. And government of Mongolia is doing their best to ensure that vulnerable people affected by the economic situation are supported and currently the government of Mongolia is donating around uh, around two twenty dollars twenty or twenty five dollars uh, in a month for the all kids who is aged from one to eighteen also this is a uh, this uh, through this, the Mongolian government is showing that how they protect and how they uh, take care of their citizens. And for a country, uh, for a country like Mongolia, with a relatively stop, uh, a small economic capacity, we are really sure that if it's possible for the economy to be regained, if experts is restored. So we are. Hope we will. We are. We hope that this uh, COVID nineteen will end soon and the economy will regain again. Okay, next page, please. So here is the picture, which is soon we can do it. It means. Um, Pandemic influenza is by nature an international issue. It's an international issue, so it requires an international solution. So if we, we can cope this COVID-19 as together. Mm -hmm. Next page, please. Mm -hmm. For the conclusion part, Mm, uh, here are the quotes uh, which is that the US president told this is not a financial crisis this is just a temporary moment of time 
that we will overcome together as a nation and as a world. So everywhere in whole world, I guess the whole world is um, in the same situation. So let's cope this virus all together and hope that our whole world economy will recover soon. Okay, the next page, please. Okay, thank you guys for giving me a chance to attend this webinar and I'm really appreciated to share with you about the cases in, and situation in Mongolia. And please try to stay at home, please stay healthy, please don't forget to wear your mask and wash your hands well and we can do it all together. Okay, thank you so much. Yeah, thank you, Miss Aryuna, for such a nice explanation. And it is interesting that now we have a new insight about what happened in Mongolia during this pandemic era. And then uh, what's interesting is that the universe, even the universities in Mongolia are closed until mm -hmm. September. Wow, mm -hmm. it's yeah. quite ah. long period yes, of it's quite, quite long. long period of time. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And the hot and cold itself refer to the challenges and the opportunities during COVID-19. Thank you, Miss Aryuna. Thank you. And then, yeah, for the second speaker, please welcome Mr. James Kalimanzila, BA in Political Science and Public Administration, with the topic COVID-19, a call for HRM strategy reforms. Time is yours. And again, I would like to remind for all the participants, you can drop the questions via Zoom chat and then please write your questions and to whom the questions is asked to. Jadi untuk para peserta international webinar, silakan drop the questions, menuliskan pertanyaannya dan untuk siapa pertanyaannya diajukan. Lalu nanti pada saat Q&A session, kami akan memberikan kesempatan untuk para speaker menjawab pertanyaan yang sudah diberikan. Halo. Oke, Mr. James, time is yours. Ya, yeah, thank you very much for our organizer, thank you very much for our professor, thank you very much for all participants. So this is a nice platform of sharing ideas. Thank you very much for that. I'm James Kalimanzila, as I have been introduced. I'm from Tanzania. For well, here now, I'm just studying at the university. <laughs> so far, I want to share you a little bit before I, pro I proceed. I want to give a general picture of how Tanzania is about COVID-19. And then we will continue to share the very nice and the practical things about COVID-19 in relation to human resources. In Tanzania, currently the situation of COVID-19, almost 500 people have been detected. But the people who have already passed away are almost 20, 21. The very interesting story in Tanzania is that, I think one week ago, our president, Dr. John Pombe Magufuri, decided to investigate about the tool and the kit that are used for testing COVID-19. But fortunately enough, those kids, those tools, where seems to have some misogons, some challenges, in which aspect he used to test animals and the fruits, for example, goat and the popo, papaya. So he used to test if those tools, they are working just uh, in a proper ways. But what he realized, what the answer was, animal, goat were positive. Papaya were positive and everything. So the issue also arises that those tools they have been challenged. You can see even in French, it happened the same like even in India and the other places. So the tools is not much effective like we expected. That is one. Another thing over there that the country is not in or under lockdown, that everyone's 
doing the normal business. So what we are doing, what are the strategic of the government is to consider and respect those regulations that have been propagated by the government and who? What has international organizations? So we wear masks, people wear masks, people also wash their hands, apply sanitizer and the other things that are seems directed. So social distance is not in much extent like that one. Although the government initiative is much effective and very proper, we appreciate on it. That's why you can see even the rate of cases is declines. The rate of deaths is not much also. So that is a very little interesting about Tanzania and how the government handle these issues because the issue of COVID-19, it affects human source because if I say about this, this means that human source, they are weaponized, they are in danger, they are in risk, they are weak, they are fear. So that is the relationship between how the government policy handles this issue and aspect. After this, a little food we have shared. Let's we go direct to the slide now. Next. Yeah, thank you very much. This is now introductions, a package, a little package of what we are going to share, the general frameworks. For our discussion, we give a little prior understanding about COVID-19, HRR, human resource strategic or reforms. We will look a little or in detail a little bit about those reforms. And we also will appropriate the so-called the necessity or importance of those reforms in COVID-19. Why those reforms? Why in these particular times? So we will see its necessity. And finally, we will penalize and say goodbye, means conclusions. Next. Yeah, COVID-19 as my comrade speaker have trying to discuss, it is just a disease. It is a disease just is caused by the so-called coronavirus. We know how well it started, Wuhan in China's, the end of December 2019. So that is a new disease for us. We didn't experience, but before this, there were many diseases like Hong Kong, uh, a disease like uh, that happened in German, like there are many diseases related with this one, but this is a new one. And still there is no cure on this disease. That's why we needed to have many platform discussions so that we can sometimes come up with medicine, cure, vaccine on how to deal with very dangerous disease, Namanya, coronavirus, that is. And also we have human resource. Who is the human resource? Human resources is defined as all those peoples working with an organization, business institutions, etc. Et et so this means that me, you, all we are human resources. That's why today we want to share things related with human resources. And the good or bad issue is that all the human resources, they are in target. All of their victims. But the good news is that all of us, if we work together, will be automatic solutions upon COVID-19. So all of him, human beings, all of human source, they are in victims. That's why we are discussing about this balance. Human source has a very potential aspect toward the ending this calamity or tragedy COVID-19. So also we have HR strategic. HR those we need because we didn't expect to have these problems. So we need to have some strategic that will make the continuation of our normal life because we used to interact, we used to have social, social relationship. Now there is social distance. We are not learning together. We are applying the so-called webinar discussions. So there is no face-to-face -face discussion. So what to do anymore? We need to create some reforms. We need to create some strategic that will boost us from one step to another. Remember now, we are trying to look forward 
on the era of 5.0. That is why there is a mutual and a great discussion about this one because it have affected the whole system of normal life of human being. And also, <coughs> HR reforms are resulted from strategic. If we make it strategic, the implementation of those changes we assume as reforms. So there are different reforms that will take place on these particular times. Next. Thank you very much. So once we talk about human resource, as I explained before, in relation to COVID-19, so those reforms, those strategic have been categorized in two groups. There is employees level, there is organization level. For example, in a, maybe in a university or school, if I say university or school means employees, they are students, but organization level, we mean the whole institution. But if in the working institutions there are employees, I think everyone knows who is employees and who is now the tool, I mean organization in general. So I classified. So strategic, they will happen on individual level, based on skills, competence of employees, knowledge. Also engaging, you know, engaging, engagement of employees in different decision, et cetera, et cetera. And also promotion, innovations, and motivating them because they are clashed with fear, death, frustration, etc. Many things. So when we are making those reforms, must lie, must include, must respect those key tools based on individual level. And employees in an organization, they are there to secure their job. They are there to secure their life. They are there to have promotions. They are there to have skills and knowledge so that they can fight even the disease or the coming disease. They can also have innovations if they have skills, knowledge. They can work and perform in a bad expert. And also organization level. The really functions and the demand of organization is to increase productions, is to have more quality product, to increase performance, and also to make sure that there is a mutual engagement and the interaction with the customers. And also, it is now a collective effort of organization toward the competitive arena and adapting the so-called globalization and technology. Those are something on things must reform based on it, making sure that a letter after this disease, every organization will have ability to compete with other organization toward the the 5.0 ELA. Thank you very much. Next. Yeah, this is now HR strategic. So what are this strategic? HR strategic will be based on the functions of human resource. So what are the functions of human resource? We have Promotion, as they say, this recruitment of employees, recruitment and selections. We have also even decision making those, and also focus of organizations. And also, there are many things, those functions. So, strategic will be based looking if recruitment at the first was done on a through contact like this one, now it will be done through online platform. So, recruitment process and the selections will change from the old or normal system to webinar system or online system. So those are strategic that will be uh, conducted. And also we have also, uh, if uh, you know, for example, in my country, we have OPRAS, you assess an employee's, employee's performance. The strategic of organization will be only online. So assessment will be done through online. So those are strategic, new strategic that must be done in uh, a, a new reforms that will be formed. And therefore, Another strategic now, there is a shift from students, for example, learning from uh, maybe university direct meeting with their teacher. It has changed. You learn just a slow digital platform. This means that there is a new strategic reform must be done. Universities, they are changing the normal style to online service, online provision of education. And I predict 
online or distance learning will take its uh, momentum this particular time. Webinary system, we have seen how it is effective now, how they are doing better on it in sharing ideas, et cetera, et cetera. So those are few strategic that will boost the organization from a critical corner to the proper directions toward the 5.0. Next. Yeah, those are continuations. This is a strategic reform. For example, work desi design. So you know, in work, there is uh, just a design. The design we used to have, now the, there will be a restructuring. If the organization was having 100 employees, now they will be removed. There will be a firing and a reduction so that to cope with this, the economy. You know, the economy now shut up. There is a drop of economy, starting with the individual level and the national level and the worldwide. You know why? Now, even people, they are not going to, to look for their daily breads because of a lockdown. So economy is down. So organization also, they are much bankrupt. Approximately 18% uh, 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 of, for example, Google work, they have been fired. And also we have almost uh, 18, no, no, 25% of UK uh, youth, or, or people under uh, 25 years have been uh, lost their job because of this situation. So they needed to change their strategy on each aspect. Also, learning and de development. Learning and development will be now given or offered through webinary and the other system, digital system, assuming that there is social distance because we never know or we are not assured that this disease will end up next year or today. Or So it can be a continuation like HIV, that HIV is still until now, so we don't know. So we need to have a strategic to anchor and to boost our economy. Otherwise, everything will be in a bad situation. Also, skills development. It will be self-oriented. Like now here, you have seen the notification. Everyone you decided to join because of the potentialities of uh, international discussion, that exchange of idea can be a very great toward the uh, education hegemonic. And also we have reward and recognitions. So if we have a balanced number of employees a balanced number of uh, uh, employees, you need now to recognize them, you motivate them so that you can budget according to your budget. So that is, and also we have HLI information, I mean digital platform. For example, providing a training upon them will be conducted in a software, as I said. Recruitment will be now based on the professional, not only to recruit many number of people, no. They will recruit targeted employees based on that, Based on their financial status they have, that will be based at that particular aspect. And also we have organization productions. The focus of organization priority was productions, but now the focus will change to be health. Because if you have health facilities and the health employees, production actually will be very high. But if people, they are Sudan and Inga, they have died, who will produce? Who will get in economic productions? It will be also a challenge about it. And also culture. There will be a new strategy, whether to maintain or to have a new culture. You know, in the organization, we used to sometimes to meet together. Now social distance have made us. We are not meeting together. For example, in Tanzania, we have like a, a, a breasting style. We used even to hug. You know, you hug each other. Now there is no such kind of... It is like you, you respect your, 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 your boss, you respect your friends, you respect your fellow human resource, but now even in Indonesia, we have that one. You shake, salamat pagi, boo, like that one. But those now, customers no longer tease. So those culture will change. So what to do to have a new strategy, whether to maintain the flag or to establish a new one. Next. Five more minutes. Oh, thank you. James. Thank you. Okay. So this is uh, like a shifting, for example, shifting, shifting routine, as I said, from the normal and also to come up to the new strategic, as I explained, equipment I explained, use of digital platform I explained, to change organization culture I explained, tradition, development method, application HLR, HLRP will take its momentum, planning, forecasting the future of organization that is, I have explained the reason for organization embark on transformation, all of those. For example, why now strategic, uh, strategic toward the uh, human resource in relation to COVID-19? 
We need to have or to meet business goal because all business now is bankrupt. We need to improve capacity to recruit or to retain the remaining employees. We can see imp many employees that have been fired and some of them, they have been, their salary have been reduced or they are cut off like that one. And also to cope with the new working environment. Now we are working from home. So that is a strategic also. That is the content of having strategic and reforms and also to fit with economic condition. Now the economic condition, not only individual, it is national or worldwide per se have been shrinking. Next. Make it to happen. This is the reforms I have explained. So reform will be based on health care. Health care will be given priority, safety and security. Individual must be secured in a job passes. Their job must be adhered that must be protected. Recruitment as expand career development. Skills and the knowledge of employees must be ahended. And also organization focus. Organization focus will not be production and quality. It will be about health of employees, that employees, they are hard, they are good. And also globalization technology. You can see the application of webinary and as a digital platforms. Budget, budget now is a cut off. So we need to have reforms about this. Those are reform. Next. Next. Thank you very much. Before I say conclusion, there is something here, like a quotations that Productivity is never an accident. What does it mean, this one? This is according to somebody, Paul Mayer, that productivity is an elongation of planning, of excellent planning, of intelligent planning. So that is, so without those planning, strategic focus, now production will be like an history. Also, if your organization requires success before commitment, it will never have either. This means that commitment together, collective effort, even we shall get the solution toward this disease. And also according to James, according to me now, that the survival of any organization depends on employees. So employees act like a heart of any organization. So human resource, you and the other people, they are very potential for the COVID-19 prevention, et cetera, et cetera. Next. Thank you very much. By concluding now, COVID-19, it is not like a past misogam history. It is a reality. It is something that exists in one community to another community. But what to do if we know that we are not supposed first to fear or to be frustrated by the situation? We must adapt like other past diseases happened. We have lost many jobs. Many people now, their economy have dropped. Nationalized, national infrastructure and planning have been disturbed. National, they are not thinking about saving their uh, development per se. They are saving about health people. That is a critical thing. And we have seen that there is a necessity of having reforms that will make individuals to have proper life, will make the government to stand from one place to another, we make the government to compete later on toward 5.0. So what are these reforms, as I said? There is introduction of digital services, as I said, webinaries. We need to copy and adapt about those things. We have no way out, whether probably we like or not. COVID-19 will proceed even for 10 years, but that is not my prediction about it. But it can happen. So what to do? We need to learn about the digital service. You can see even now some companies which are organized in online. For example, Alibaba, Shift, Air platforms have been improved a lot and they have increased their economy. So we need to change and to change our economy from the hard one to the new system. You can see some sectors have been paralyzed. We need to iron. For example, the tourist sector in Tanzania and the other places have been paralyzed. So we need to iron up. We need to wake up up. So what to do? There are some strategic. You can see also air, air right? They are in trouble now. So far, by sharing a little things to you, because I'm somehow talkative, because 
I'm a hungry learner. I want to learn more and I learn more every time. So I will take too much time. So thank you very much for sharing, for enjoying. I need to have many discussions from you, many questions. If you have questions, thank you very much. Asante sana. In Tanzania, we say Asante sana. <laughs> Thank you, Mr. James, for the explanation. It is such a fresh new knowledge that actually, during the pandemic era, is actually a call to do a strategy reform in HRM. We can do like using digital system, changing the organizational culture, and etc. Thank you, Mr. James. Okay. Thank you too. And then, Thank you too. yeah. Thank you. And then next, last but not least speaker, please welcome Ms. Ugyen Lamo become in counting with the topic COVID-19 challenges and opportunity of HRD. Time is yours. Ms. Ulgen. Hello, Ms. Ogen? Yeah, we cannot hear your voice. Can you please turn on the, the audio? Hello? Hello, okay, yeah. Hello, Ms. Lukian. Hello. Okay, yeah, you can start. Time is yours, yeah. Miss. Okay. Hello. Okay. Uh, I'm Ogin from Bhutan. Uh, I'm going to present on topic challenges and opportunities of HRD. Uh, before going to my topic, I want to uh, share some current situation in our country. As, as of now, we have uh, 21 cases of COVID-19 in Bhutan. All our imported ones, those who are working abroad, who, who came here abroad. Uh, as of now, there is no transmission in community. We are safe. No people, there is no death at all. And uh, to overcome this uh, COVID-19, uh, all are uh, taking uh, but uh, active participation, including head leaders to the all citizen, or king, including prime minister and head of state district are uh, taking care of it. Uh, like recently, our king and uh, all prime minister uh, have uh, take initiative to uh, inspect, like uh, uh, we share a border near border with India, some some people are living in Jaigong, that is Indian side. So in order to uh, escape from them, uh, King have initiative to build houses for them within Bhutan, and they are all evacuated and brought to the Bhutan. That is the news till yesterday. So to go to my main topic, uh, was next slide please. Uh, opportunities of HRD because of uh, H, uh, of HR, HRD because of COVID-19. Here I will be talking both globally and locally. Next slide, please. The first opportunity uh, opportunity is that uh, COVID-19 has uh, give a positive impact of in environment. This is the uh, every problem whole wide uh, suffering because not being able to keep the environment clean and uh, water safe because of this COVID-19 there is no movement of uh, transportation all all entry exits are closed because of that uh, this uh, very problem like air pollution has dropped significantly, the water of vaccines are clean, and uh, people have started to use dom domestic energy rather than commission uh, use. And sec 
next slide please uh the second advantage of uh, covid-19 is like equity distribution among the hr yeah because of a covid-19 though all all hr has been uh, affected but mostly vulnerables are the people with the low income uh, here in bhutan tourism sectors are more affected because people who are working at that sectors has been lost their job some some employees are uh, already fired some are being uh, uh, being stay on leave without pay so in order to overcome this uh, opportunity uh, overcome this uh, situation uh, in bhutan we have developed a kidu relief that is the uh, people who are interested have uh, donated some amount to the government so through government uh, government are distributing who are distributing to them who are mostly affected if uh, if uh, if some have lost job and uh, lost job they have given a salary fully but some 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 business are affected but the employer can pay them partially they are paid uh, partially and half are paid by government and and here like uh, because of this uh, covid-19 most likely to get affected our uh, elderly people to overcome this problem like uh, government have initiated to take data of uh, elderly people so they can uh, they can get information anytime if there is need of uh, health health facilities uh, next slide please Uh, next slide please uh and third uh, uh opportunities as uh, there's a lot of uh, improvement of health uh th through advice from government and uh, the health sectors uh people are started to stay them fit by doing physically staying physically fit doing exercise going for work and people have started to quoting tobacco also they are eating healthy healthy food and uh, and parents are taking care of their children most effectively and next slide please uh, uh this is the opportunities of covid-19 here first one is volunteerism i will be talking based on our bhutan volunteer this is the desu uh, we call in this in bhutan desu a guidance office uh, this is mainly developed uh, introduced by our king king in order to uh, encourage all citizen to be active in the greater role of nation building uh, they them are been they are being trained to enhance the spirit of volunteerism and to undertake uh undertake a uh, disaster work to render their services uh, when there is a bad situation like right now there is covid-19 and to to prevent from covid-19 and uh, to 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 prevent from the spreading from one to another there's a need of uh, lots of uh, uh, security guard taking guide and to uh, people like uh, people who has lost job uh, they have no other things to do so they are uh, voluntary entering in this in order to learn how to guide and they are being after uh, finishing uh, their training they have been allocated to do uh, duty uh, 24/7 available and they are, as of now they have been doing more uh, rendering services more than police and uh, armies in our country next slide please uh a uh, boost in agriculture uh, agriculture sector are the most uh, like unlikable by people uh, they uh, every youth many youth they don't like to join agriculture sector after graduating uh, because the mismatch of their studies and uh, not being able to get uh, a cooperation 
in the corporation sector uh, they 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 keep uh, agriculture sector as a uh, last option because in this pandemic situations um, uh, our country we we fully depend on india india uh, everything to get like we import almost 90% of uh, necessary item from the india so in order to be a uh, self sufficient uh, many youth are uh, many youth are Interesting in do agriculture sectors. So uh, people who being uh, uh, wandering in a town has been uh, gone to gone to village to learn agriculture sector to to grow their uh, at least they can't uh, uh, produce groceries, but they are they are inactive to uh, grow uh, vegetables. So they at least we can uh, stop buying from the India and be a self sufficiency. Next slide, please. Next slide. Please, next slide. Um, first one, previous one. Uh, education challenge. Uh, this is the highest uh, big challenge uh, all whole world are facing now. Uh, as of 10 May 2020, approximately like 1.2 billion learners are currently affected due to school closure in response to the pandemic. According to the UNICEF monitoring, 177 countries are currently implementing nationwide closure and 13 are implementing local closure, impacting about 73.5% of the worldwide student population challenge. Uh, in Bhutan, uh, government has the suggested to do e-learning here but all schools institute are being closed they are they are the students are learning through the online classes but there are many problems like there is in inadequate facilities uh, it is time consuming because the the syllabus which is going to cover in stated date but they are not able to cover and there's a network problem. Next slide, please. And the another challenges of COVID-19 is uh, loss of job and wages. Like if I share uh, Gavali, like according to the international level organization, IOLU News, the COVID-19 is expected to wipe out like 6.7 percent of working hours globally in the second quarter of 2020, which is equivalent to uh, 195 million full-time workers. Next slide, please. Uh, this is the case study in Bhutan. Uh, new coronavirus COVID-19 pandemic has forced about like uh, 11,235 people out of job and domestic market according to the labor ministry. And 24% of all regular and contract employee in the private sector, most of the business that laid off their employees in the tourism and allied sector. The labor ministry also estimated uh, that about uh, 3,000 of those employed abroad have returned home. They takes the number of people rendered jobless by the pandemic in the domestic market and abroad to 14,000 as possibly. Next slide, please. Uh, uh, this is Govali who uh, Govali forecasted to how many countries are going to uh, lose job? Like Arab state, 8.1 percent, which is equivalent to 5 million full-term workers, are going to affect their job. In Europe, 
like uh, seven point eight percent, which is equivalent in to twelve million full time workers are going to affect. And in in Asia and in Pacific, like uh, seven point two percent, which is equivalent to two one twenty five million full time workers are going to affect. Next slide, please. The uh, the sector at high risks are like uh, accommodation, food service, uh, manufacturing, retail, business, and administrative activities are most going to affect their business because of this COVID nineteen. Next slide, please. Uh, there, because of COVID-19, there is culture changes. <laughs> like uh, beyond the immediate threat to life, COVID-19 is also playing ways to the uh, culture schedule, forcing cancellation and suspension of so, uh, some of the society biggest culture event. Like uh, many musicals, the musical industry, there is musical delays and cancellation. There is uh, cancellation of gathering, art galleries, and uh, fix football fixture puts on hold until further notice. Next slide. Uh, one of the uh, challenges that COVID-19 has faced is uh, this racism and discrimination among the people. The outbreak of COVID-19 and its subsequent discriminations across the Gulf has left a shock, a wave of uh, disbelief and confusion in many countries. Uh, example, in according to uh, Asian Pacific Policy and Planning Council, Asia are being speed on, yell at, even threatened to the street. In North America, Asia, business are being violent, violent targeting. Like India, in India, uh, not people who who resemble like uh, Chinese. They are being targeted the most. They they are being shared face, being their facial facial features with the people from China. Things uh, COVID nineteen has started from uh, China. People has started to think that every every people looks uh, looks like a China. They they are having a uh, COVID nineteen, which is not true. Next slide, please. Oh, thank you. Uh, we, in conclusion, I want to conclude with the uh, SOT analysis. The, this is a strategy, four strategies that is used to measure whether uh, is a Especially, this is uh, used in business. Whether you're to look over, like your business is running, uh, strength, weakness, opportunities, or threat. Uh, I feel like uh, this this strategy will be the best to use the COVID-19 measures all around the world. Like here, here there is four factor uh, as strength for street, uh, two weakness all opportunities and threats through through strengths we can get opportunities and through weakness we can get threats here covid 19 what i see is first being first being a lockdown we have uh, opportunities because being there being being a lockdown there is no movement of vehicles people can't move then there will be less uh, pollution, then the environment will be clean. And second strength was uh, turning to agriculture here. If the people, if people get interested to follow agriculture sectors, then we can be, uh, we can, opportunity is that we can be self-sufficiency. We, we don't have to uh, uh, never continue to give our necessary needs we can produce our own and sustain ourselves. And third uh, strength is head concern. Because of COVID-19, we are health concern. Because of health concern, we have opportunities that there will be no medical issue. And uh, weakness is, 
in our country, we have uh, less population. So if we have low, uh, in Bhutan, we have less, less population. And if the, if the COVID-19 got many, uh, many people, their transmission is uh, many, then there will be, uh, there will be, there will be less in HR who will be working and looking after our nation. And second weakness is the shortage of medical facilities and staffs. Uh, uh, in our country, we are lacking that we have a shortage of uh, uh, medical facilities and staffs. So it can be lead, uh, due to this. So there will be there will be high rate of high rate of uh, uh, death death of HR and threat is that it can uh, lead to uh, uh, shortage of uh, labor in organization. And third weakness is because of close entry and exit point, it, it will lead to threat fall in economy. The close, the, if there is no entry and exit, then there will be no tourists coming to the, our country. The, our main source of uh, revenue is tourism sector, so which is 100% close right now. So obviously, and it will lead to fall in economy. Next slide, please. And this is the end of my presentations. Thank you all for your attention. And, and uh, what I can say is please all stay safe, stay, stay safe, just keep uh, social distancing and stay happily. Thank you. Okay. Thank you, Ms. Lukian. It is interesting for us to know what happened in Bhutan, especially during the pandemic era. As Ms. Ulgen has mentioned before, that many people in Bhutan work in the tourism and hospitality sector, but they have to suffer from losing jobs and income. But they can actually uh, create some opportunities in terms of digital business, such as online business. Thank you, Ms. Ulgen. Okay. And then, so for the next session will be about question and answer session. So the committee has collected some questions to the speakers. Um, and then for the first session will be for Miss Aryuna. Miss Aryuna, mm -hmm. are you ready for answering the questions from the participants? Sure. Sure. Okay. Okay. So I will read the first question for Miss Aryuna. The first is from Ferry Setiawan. The question is. To Miss Ariuna, what is the most inspiring story in Mongolia during pandemic, especially in e-business development point of view? Yeah, you can answer the question first. Okay. Now, through this uh, COVID-19 pandemic, the e-business is benefiting a lot. And Mongolians, we are not much familiar with it. So uh, because we are only 3 million population in my country and we are not much experienced with it. And, but the e-business influenced uh, uh, most of the sectors and government of uh, Mongolia uh, helps a lot to support e-business and there are lots of impacts of e-business on businesses. There are such like uh, direct sales to the customers and also the, that e-business anytime we can assess from anywhere. And it's also customization of uh, the products. And also it saves our time, quicker time to the market. And also maybe we can do the flexible pricing. <laughs> I guess we can directly talk to the businesses and we can talk about the pricing. And also the product portfolio and promotions for the e-businesses. And also it impacts on the price discrimination, maybe. And uh, maybe the lower stocks out through this business. 
And um, for the people behavior on e-business, uh, when the first, um, maybe when the first case of uh, the COVID has confirmed in Mongolia in March, through that time, we are still in lockdown. And since that time, the people are searching the products on internet through Facebook, through Instagrams. We are doing lots of shopping there, and it impacts for the maybe for the so many uh, sectors. Also for the educational sectors, it can be affected because most of the teachers they are teaching from their home through online classes, and uh, this lockdown gives us uh, lots of chance um, to learn that <clears throat> we don't know. Uh, especially the kids are kids and students. They are learning language uh, through online and also maybe from the YouTube's. So some of the uh, companies they are selling their classes online. Okay, e-business is going like this in my country. Okay, so all of them are being online, yeah. Yeah. Ya, jadi kalau dari jawabannya Miss Aryuna, mungkin sama dengan di Indonesia. Di Mongolia pun dari berbagai sektor industri juga sekarang berbasis online. Online shop jadi laku ya, biasanya dari ibu-ibu atau mbak-mbak sekalian yang sukanya Shopee. Nah, ini jadi Shopee-nya suka kebuka terus ini ya. Oke, okay. and then for the second question, Miss Aryuna. Mm -hmm. Um, this is from Mas Jamil. The question is, what are the activities of residents in Mongolia until now, and what mm -hmm. support from the government, mm -hmm. the government supports during this pandemic era? Mm -hmm. Okay. Please, Miss Aryuna. Uh -huh. uh, here, there are uh, most uh, sensitive sectors in my countries are, like obviously, like tourism sector, and air transport industries are in very sensitive situation. And uh, mostly the 60,000 of workers are at risk nowadays in my country. And um, especially for the tourism sector, which creates the large amount of job opportunities in my country. And it's negative impact on the sector for a very long time. And um, the government of uh, Mongolia are um, doing very great these days and they are looking for the all chances to take care of their citizens and um, they are giving a uh, lots of chances to uh, the uh, most of the, they are, um, obviously there are lots of workers who are fired Mm -hmm. In mining sectors and education sectors, the, lots of uh, the people are fired, but still the government is um, trying to help them by financially, and it's going like this. Okay, so the government mm -hmm. support financially to the those people who are infected from yes. losing jobs from and income. Uh -huh, yes, also there for the vulnerability vulnerable parts they are helping mm -hmm. a lot okay okay and then for the third question for miss aryuna this is from ahmad abbas so i am ahmad abbas from pare pare institute my question is my question for initial session is that is Mongolia government taking the loan to IMF to the recovery of the economy. Sorry? Is that, is that Mongolia government uh -huh. taking the loan to IMF to the recovery of the economy? Mm -hmm. For the economy, we, are, um, we have very... Um, during the um, pandemic, the, mm -hmm. it, uh, it's putting a lot of million jobs not in Mongolia, in globally at risk. So the, it, affects, uh, it affects for the whole economy. 
But uh, for uh, Mongolian country, like with a relatively small economic capacity and that we are, uh, if uh, our export is restored, it will not take time for the economy to regain. It will be possible for the economy to regain soon. Okay, so, okay. Thank you, Miss Aryuna. And then for the participants, I'd like to remind you to drop your name and email to Zoom chat. So the committee will give a take to your name and email to confirm uh, your email also. And then the next question is for Mr. James. Hi, James, are you ready to answer the questions? Yeah, yeah, yours. Yeah, yeah, yeah okay. Yeah, I'm ready. I'm ready to share. Okay. Okay. Now for the first question from Ahmad Abbas yeah. to from? James, I am Ahmad Abbas. The name is Ahmad Abbas from Pare Pare. What kind of new culture you mean? Is there a movement of recent culture to new culture in the business? Oh, thank you very much. This is very amazing and a very beautiful question. It, it demonstrates how people, they are very punctual and the foreigners. So thank you very much, Mr. Hamad from Pare Pare, if I have not mistaken. So first of all, let me talk a little bit in generic style, that culture as a culture have its dimension. For example, we have seen the extreme close of different church, you know, church, all of those are church attached from culture, social aspect. So close of church service. We have seen also close of school. We have seen also change of normal style of living. For example, shaking hands. Once you are greeting, namaste, apakabari, through greetings. Now those church have been diluted because of social distance. There is also catch of Touching each other. Hello, I miss you. For example, in my country, that is, things happen always in an organization. People, they like to show like concern, you know. Hello, like love in organizations. But now have been bumped off because of COVID-19. So there are many cultures. In a general, we have those religion culture have been bumped off. Uh, we have uh, school, event school. That is part and the past, 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 past of culture. So meeting together, socialization, those are culture. They have been diluted off. So through those aspects, we can see how culture has been changed. Now specifically, based on organizations, any organization have multiple culture. It have decision-making style culture. People they used to sit around the table, they share their discussion. Now it is no longer teasy. They use webinar. Zoom, etc., etc. So that culture, we needed to have another strategy towards a new culture on this aspect. We have also the modeling discussion or panel in having meetings. Those culture now no longer is. We have another alternative. Those are some critical few things to Mr. Ahmad. Thank you very much. Okay. So you mean the new culture is based on online, all of the sectors, right? Yeah. yeah, actually, the new culture that will be formed is related from strategic. It will be based mm -hmm. on the digital service, that from the normal culture that have been disturbed, now we are going to move or to shift to another culture. Based on religion issues, as I said, as part and parcel of culture, people, they are only listening, they are players sometimes, through. people, they are not going, going even to the masjid or to the uh, church because of this, and also discussion and other panel, tit for tat discussions, no longer tease. They are only through digital platform. So there is such kind of things. Okay, so people are going to adapt to the new culture and the new habit during this pandemic era. You mean exactly like that? Indeed. Okay, exactly. jadi uh, menurut dari James, uh, bahwa semua orang patut untuk beradaptasi dengan kultur yang baru sekarang, dengan kebiasaan yang baru sekarang selama pandemic era, selama era pandemi ini, semuanya berbasis online. Bahkan dengan seminar pun kita juga online, begitu. 
Okay, thank you, James. And then for the second question, oh, before I continue to read the second question to James, I'd like to remind you once again, untuk peserta, silakan drop nama dan Gmail atau email yang didaftarkan ketika registrasi ke kolom chat Zoom untuk dicek oleh panitia. Terima kasih. Okay, next, James, we have the second questions here yeah. from Tanti Amarta Putri. Yeah. Hello, I have a question for Mr. James. As we know, this pandemic is a bit unpredictable as to when it will be subside, thus making life back to normal. For the time being, what's your advice to undergrads regarding how to improve their skills or qualities to contribute to making better human resources and also optimizing the situation in order to stay focused. Thank you. Yeah, Can you get the questions, Jim? Yeah, yeah. Okay. this is very technical questions and yeah. it's based on my field and the profession. So very nice food for me for sharing to you. Yeah, actually, uh, Due to the predictions, for example, the day before yesterday, World Health Organizations, who I mean, they proclaimed that, or they said that COVID-19 sometime can stay over here. They don't know. They are predicting that we can live with this aspect, like what we live with other uh, chronic diseases like HIV, et cetera, et cetera. It can, be, it can exist for long. So how now we can overcome and we can retain our skills or employees in an organization. First of all, let's we accept it, that COVID-19 is there. So what to do if we accept it? We are supposed to cope or to shift from the old style we used to do. That is individual because we can't save or solve this problem on an individual. We have individual level, organization level, national level. It is a collective war. To fight, but if we fight alone, organization will be in a very narrow state. So, what to do? We are supposed as individual, self individual, to read, to learn a lot so that to maintain your own skills and the knowledge to cope, to understand what is the directions of the whole world, the common world, not only your own organization. That is one. It will help you to increase your just your skills and the knowledge about it. Second things. We are supposed now to know that our organization, they are not stable. They are in a shrinking system. So we need to help them, whether through thinking, advising them what to do. Once they do better, our salary will be maintained and they will keep getting. As I said, some people, they have been fired because of these situations. Some people, their salary is low. So what to help the organization to cooperate with them to end this calamity. That will also put us, another thing is to put in our mind that career development is not only to attend the conference or to do whatever. Career development starts with you. Get your time, read different materials from internet, take your time, read or follow those instructions that have been given, etc., etc. Read books. It will help you now to be strong and stable toward the, the new generation coming, which is 5.0. We don't know even how we can achieve that one because of the fear and the competitive we have today because of this COVID-19. The last, the last aspect on that question, because it is somehow Hello? wrong, it is based on skill is that ability that HLA must have to make better well-being for employee in this kind of situation. That in order for HLA now to make or to do better, they need to have the so-called self-reliance toward the organization. If they have that one, they will cooperate on it. Some of them, they have been fired. That is not a problem again. We are supposed to look forward. There are some factors that make them to do so. We agree the situations. And unless we encourage ourselves, self-motivation, cooperate mm -hmm. with the government, cooperate with an organization, stay safe, that will help an organization to look forward and protect yourself because in order to be productive, you need to keep yourself health so that you can now increase your skills. If you are sick, 
actually, you will never get involved. Protect yourself, protect your skills, protect your organization, protect the country, protect the nation and the world. Thank you very much for that question. Very technical question, mm -hmm. and a very nice question. Yeah, thank you, James. So in sum, to sum up the, question, uh, the answers from James is, for the undergrads generation to read a lot because reading is such a um, getting more new you, by reading you can gain more new knowledge and then self reliance right James yeah exactly yeah okay thank you James and then for the third questions James you still have one more questions yeah no problem <laughs> okay from Ajeng Angistia yeah. a question to James. During this hard situation, what's your recommendation for us as HR to keep our employees do their best ability to keep up their work while the company's business itself is facing difficulties? Yeah, also this is very technical and my feed question. So I'm very happy. Thank you very much, Ajin. Is it Ajin? Ajin. Thank you very much, Ajin. So far, what to do here? The first things as a HR professionals or as a HR supervisor, make sure that your employees <laughs> have good health. Protect the health of your employees. <laughs> Think about other things without protecting them. If you have health employees, this means that your organization will perform better and also we will exist and afford this problem that is one that keep their hands strong that is one a second one provide the education to them provide the training to them if you provide the training for them they can know what things to do very terrible tragedy error they will know so if you give them they will know how to handle and how to produce another aspect here give them the focus the general focus of organization is based on production, actually, but in the motivation, etc. But the general focus now, it is about their health. It is, it is about how to save the organization from shrinking and the drop down. So if they know that oh, we are in bankrupt now, so we don't need about incentives, promotion, etc. What we need is to save the organization. Their heart will be very nice, no stress. No frustration, because if they get a frustration at this particular time, means you are killing your own organizations. Remember, employees mm -hmm. is the heart of any organizations. Likewise, as HR expert, manager, or administrator, or DAP, general director of HR issues, make sure that you have planning, positive planning, strategic planning. If your plan actually was about uh, uh, recruiting many employees, now is no longer it is. It is not a little time for doing such kind of things. Instead, you will focus on other things that will save your people. They will remain. You will save your employees and they will save your organizations. So once you do such kind of things, few things as I mentioned, now your organization and the economy will remain has your employees will have a health economy generally. Thank you very much for that technical and very beautiful questions, particularly in HR sphere. Okay, thank you, James. So it is important that the employees itself should have, a, what is it, a self-organization, you mean, like that, yeah, James. Yeah, exactly. Okay, okay thank you, James. Um, now we move to Ms. Ugyen. Hello, Ms. Ugyen. Hello. Yeah, here are some questions for you. We have three questions for you. Are you ready? <laughs> okay, the first question to Miss Ugen from Esther. How HR doing in that job in environment and economic sustainability in organization level? Yeah, you can answer the question first. Can you repeat the question? Okay. How HR doing in that job in environment and economic sustainability in organization level? Economic sustainability. Okay. Yeah. Uh, okay. 
uh, right now every business are in depression some they are losing their uh, employees some they have already shut down the business like like it's kind of a stretch uh, strategy uh, reforms like in order to sustain business our others uh, advice they can reduce salaries of employee uh, it is harsh but it's a fact like if the if there is no business running there won't be no production the employees will be remain idle so if they can reduce some salary they can, they will sustain there there will be no expenses more and second thing is i think they need to change organization focused like i mean if the business their focus will be more on their outcomes um, profit maximizations At, in this pandemic situation is better to give importance to uh uh health uh, employees mm-hmm. health they can uh, like providing uh, safety like masks sanitizers like testing so they can they won't be they won't be they won't affect and their if their employees are safe then comp- comp- organization will also say and also they have to look uh, on reallocation of budget like i says like from uh like uh, they have to give importance to the uh, uh, health uh, health of the employee thank you okay so the organization should provide the employees the mask hand sanitizer and the what is it the health safety right okay thank you miss and then for the second question from joseph rugatiri I'm Joseph from IPB University. Question to Ms. Ukian Lamu. What are negative impact of COVID-19 to the environment mm-hmm. and how the agriculture sector will be affected by this situation both developed and developing countries? Uh first agriculture uh, I mean uh, first one negative impact on environment yeah uh, solving environment problem has been a big issues uh, for for the world they are they have been lacked uh, keeping uh, pollution list everywhere is full of pollution because of covid-19 the, there has been lockdown mm-hmm. and cancel uh, every there there is shut down of free entry and exit to boundaries and uh, uh, we go we citizen can go to other countries and their people can come uh, into our country so there is there's less chances of uh, transportation if there is no movement of transportation they are going to produce less pollution and they, then the environment will keep safe and people people are uh, profit people are restricted to, to visit oceans uh, especially for the social distancing if they go nearby ocean they won't make any uh, they won't uh, they won't be uh, making uh, uh, dirty around the ocean then then it is that's why they are going to keep ocean clean that's why uh these are the two factors so they can keep uh, environment clean and second questions in how to to give uh, answer to uh, agriculture how agriculture is happening during this pandemic situation like i said before in our country many youth are not interested in agriculture sectors they, they think they are uh, highly qualified they are they are eligible to work in big organizations and they do, don't look after agriculture sectors because because of, because of this pandemic situation we youth are mm-hmm. not worrying about mm-hmm. them instead they are worrying our countries because our countries are lacking because we are lacking for this uh, necessary item we can produce like groceries we fully have to depend on india at least for for vegetables 
they can we can we can produce ourselves thinking to uh, contribute to the nation development so they are being encouraged to do agriculture farms uh, going to, going back to their village you now they are very uh, doing in active and very energetic to do these things thank you hello okay hello. yeah so uh, not uh, to supplement hello? not only that uh, okay, if we can produce yes uh, we can uh, if we can yeah you can continue yeah uh, to some uh, to addition to that uh, if we can produce ourselves we can export to other countries that's why we can uh, boost our economic growth uh, by uh selling goods to another country okay okay thank you miss and then for the third question for still for miss ukian from ajeng angistia dear ukian that's actually awesome if you guys only have 21 cases in putan if i heard it correctly is it okay and then my question is so what can we have what can we do as hr in general that we can implement even though we are from different countries to help our own company sustain, sustain sorry and push through the pandemic okay uh yeah all right uh, in current situation we have only 21 cases that uh, these are all imported one. Uh, luckily, we have not transmission in our uh, communities locally. So in order to prevent, uh, to sustain organization, what I have to do is uh, get advice what government and health, health sectors are doing, like maintain social distancing, um, Maintaining social distancing, uh, avoiding uh, such as gathering like partying, going for mm -hmm. picnic, and they can also uh, sustain their uh, situations, overcome this pandemic situations uh, by like uh, right now in our country. Uh, including our head leader King, they are doing. Uh, they are in their own duty, uh, duty to prevent COVID nineteen coming from the other countries. Like uh, their our kings and leaders are going through uh, uh, border site to suspect uh, uh, to maintain maintain dis distancing. Like uh, people, other countries are like uh, not letting to come our countries and here our gate are uh, closed already we are people are not letting to go other countries countries so that's why we are maintaining uh, that's why we have a low low cases in our time mm. okay great oh, okay thank you miss again mm. and then mm. Ah, here are, are I have some questions from the participants to all of the speakers to answer. So please, Miss Aryuna, Mr. James, and Miss Ulkin, please answer this question. The first question from I Gede Arya Raditya. For all speakers, the HR, uh, what will you do for making employee well-being secure? What is the important skill or ability that HR must have to make a better well-being for employee in this kind of situation? That's the first question. And then another question still from the same person. The second question. For all speakers, as the HR, what will you do for making employee... Oh, it's the same question. Sorry. Okay, so only one question. Sorry. Uh, what will you do for making employee well-being secure? What is the important skill or ability that HR must have 
to make a better well-being for employee in this kind of situation. Okay, anyone would like to answer first? Who wants to answer first? Miss Aryuna? Okay. Or James, are you ready to answer the question first? Yeah, still, you're still unmute the, you're still muting, okay. Mm -hmm. Okay, okay, yeah. James, please. Yeah, thank you very much. This is very beautiful questions. I like it. Thank you very much, for Mr. Gide. I'm very sorry if I have mentioned different mm -hmm. one. Yeah, it's but all in all, uh, your question is how now the well-being of HLA can survive in this particular time? As I explained uh, before that uh, this war, it is for every individual, for every nation. There is no rich nation will survive, small nation will survive. It is for everyone. So what to do? How to keep their well-being, first of all, to make sure that as an organization, employer, government, or what at all, to make sure they are healthy, they are strong, that is one. The second thing is here, you know, employees as employees, they have fear now. They are fearing to lose their job. They have been frustrated by the situations. And also they have been frustrated. Maybe they are fearing to be fired from jobs. They are fearing to be, or to stay sometimes even to be home only. So they are stressed. So as an employer's, as a government, we need now to make like a learning platform to them, to provide trainings to them, psychological training. Like now we are sharing here, we know everything that's going on in one country and another country and the world in general. The next aspect is how now skills of this, of this human resource can be protected and maintained is like this skills of employees will be ahead or kept well once they have job security <laughs> if they know that an employer or their organizations will secure their their post this means that they will get involved positively they will not be paralyzed in thinking they will contribute to everything and their skills also will be a bind up. Another things you protect through providing webinar seminar. You talk with them, you give them how the situation is, and you also you project the situation that an organization specifically can do for the maintaining or recovering of the economy, making sure that the continuation of their salary will be as normal. So once you provide the, such kind of learning attribution, it is one of style of boosting them and keeping their skills well. So how now they can contribute if you do so? Means that they will get involved directly to this war. That is what they will utilize effectively their energy and ability and skills in making decisions of an organization. Although they are working mm -hmm. this probably to their home place, but they will be committed because they are secured. Another aspect, they will contribute their understanding about the organizations because there is really recognition and the turbulence from their employers. Those are some few tips that can keep the employees well-being and they also can sustain their skills. I can mention like human resource planning, and also making good budget for them, providing training for them, just like this one in a summary. Thank you very much. Okay, thank you, James. Miss Aryuna, you can answer the question. Yeah. From your perspective. Yeah. Uh, like as mentioned, uh, as just uh, James mentioned, like nowadays the employee, most of the employees have a fear and they are mostly depressed and stressed because they most of them thinking that when we will gonna fire 
like that. So in this situation, if you are an employee of an organization, we need to cope this uh, hard situation all together because it's not only depending on the employee. It's not only depending on the organization. So we need to cope this as together. Like, um, uh, I think the organizations must give like challenge the employees to improve themselves. Mm -hmm. And maybe in the other hand, it's a chance for the employees to rest a little bit then to avoid the, um, this hard situation and then just then relaxing at home. It's a good opportunity for us because we are very busy in this uh, 21st century and this is a great chance for us to relax a little bit and to improve yourself. And the organization will gonna never leave you in this hard situation and I'm so thankful for that type of organizations which are still uh, trying to own their employees in this hard situation. We are very grateful for it and um, we are all in uh, insecure about um, to leave the job. So don't stress too much about it and try to improve yourself more educationally and physically, maybe more about, more for psychology. Thank you. Thank you, Ms. Aryuna. And Ms. Ogyen, please, from your perspective. Yeah, for their being a secure employee, uh, for that both employer and from uh, employee side, there should be efforts. Like, they shouldn't be giving up totally, like, losing their hope. Though their business has been affected, uh, affected, uh, they have to come up together, work together, and come up with the uh, new strategies. Employee also, they shouldn't be thinking fire, firing their uh, employees immediately. Uh, by retaining, they should be working hard hard by developing new strategies, how to overcome, how to make a profitable after completing this pandemic. I don't know when to uh, over this pandemic situation. And also employees should uh, uh, give their salary fully, like some of the organization, like in, like I said, tourism sectors, employer salaries, salaries has been let off. The summers being uh, kept in uh, leave without pay. I think employees should be, employees shouldn't be doing such things. Like they should be paid fully, whether their business is running in profit or losses. And and from uh, employee side also, I heard like in our countries, uh, being their business affected, more more employees are planning to switching their uh, jobs. So this is, I feel like this is not a good idea to leave their jo a job. Instead, they will, they should be working hard with coming up with the new strategies to overcome this business. That's all. Thank you. Okay. Thank you, Ms. Ogien. Okay. Dear speakers and participants of the international webinar, we have now come to the end of our session. On behalf of all the committee, I would like to express my utmost gratitude to the speakers, to the presenters, Ms. Aryuna, Mr. James, and Ms. Ogien. Thank you for participating in this webinar.